G'day, g'day. It's Nick here and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And in this video, we want to have a bit of a talk about snake bite first aid. Something every Australian should know. So stay tuned guys, we're going to talk about something that might save your life. So anybody who's interested in snakes enough to be watching our video is probably aware that we've got the most venomous snakes on earth here in Australia. And uh, there is about 3,000 people a year bitten by snakes in our country. However, there's only about three people a year die. Now there's a few factors why we've got such good survival, but one of the biggest is correct first aid. Now this girl here, Slug, our inland type and who's featured in a few of our videos now, actually came to us after she bit her last owner. And being the most venomous snake on earth, he spent 10 days in hospital on kidney dialysis and he had a few complications, but the reason he made it to hospital and the reason he's still kicking around today is because he applied the correct first aid. So this is really something that should be taught in schools and anybody in Australia should know how to treat a snake bite. It's just the reality of living in the country we are and it really does save lives. So first of all, I've got to put out a bit of a disclaimer. It's the world we live in today. It's got to be said that I'm not a paramedic. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is how I would be treating a snake bite if I was bitten out on the farm or out in the bush catching snakes for the like. Uh, it's how the, currently in, in the beginning of 2018, the Royal Flying Doctor Service and St. John's Ambulance also recommend to treat a snake bite. But if you've ever done a first aid course, you'll know that year to year, uh, things like CPR and the like change. So there's no guarantee that next year or the year after they're not going to tweak these things. But this is the way that every zoo I've worked for recommends treating a snake bite. Now, if you are bitten by a snake, the very first thing before you start wrapping anything up, and just like all first aid, is safety. You want to make sure you're away from the snake. You're going to be safe to apply first aid. Now, please do not go and kill the snake or catch the snake. Doctors don't want to see it. They can't identify snakes any better than the average Joe. Uh, on top of that, uh, you're actually putting yourself in more danger of a repeat bite or your first aider in danger of being bitten again. And you're actually wasting time. The quicker you get this first aid done, the quicker that you're going to be okay. Now, the next thing is you're going to want to have a good snake bite kit. Now, the kit that I recommend and that I carry with me when I'm doing snake call-outs and, and venomous snake education and the like is this one here. It's by Survival Emergency Solutions, and I like this for a couple of reasons. It's Australian-made, but the actual bandages in here are something really unique that I haven't seen with any other bandages. Now, before you start wrapping things up and, and rendering the first aid, another big myth that people do is they go to wash the snake bite site. You don't want to wash the bite. Uh, any venom that's in you is enough to do the job. Washing it off is only making it harder for the hospital to detect what you've been bitten by. So leave it exactly how you are, have the patient sit down, try and keep them calm, because the calmer you are, the slower your heart rate is, the better off you're going to be. Then you're going to want to wrap it up with a bandage. Now, any compression is good compression, but the bandage that I recommend is one of these. Now, if you are carrying a snake bite kit out in the bush, it sounds like a silly little thing, but I'd recommend unwrapping all your bandages. The last thing you want to be doing in an emergency is fiddling with plastic wrappers. If you've got them unwrapped and just zipped up in your box ready to go, piece of cake. Now the reason I like this kit so much is it comes with this bandage. We call it a smart bandage. And the reason being, I said before, that uh, when you're bitten by a snake, it actually travels through our lymphatic system, not our blood. And that basically means sort of the muscle tissues. So by wrapping the bandage, you're not actually wanting to cut off blood supply. In that case, if you do have a bite that's non-venomous for the like, you actually risk cutting off blood supply to your hand for maybe hours for no reason. And the reason this bandage works really well is you'll see it has these little squares on it. When you start off the bandage, they're rectangles, and then you get to correct compression, they're squares. So in a situation where somebody's going to be quite nervous, not thinking straight, this bandage does some of the thinking for you. Now, whichever limb you're bitten on, legs or arms, which is 95% of bites is the extremities, you want to start at the end, but I leave the fingers uncovered, or the toes. Like I said, you don't want to cut off blood supply. So by leaving fingers or toes, it means the doctor is able to pinch those fingers and check that blood's still coming back and everything's working okay. What you're actually wanting to do is stop the patient moving these muscles. Now, in an ideal situation, you'd have somebody doing this for you, but I'm the only person here. So you're gonna keep wrapping up as far as the bandage goes. Now, ideally, you're gonna have a couple of these things and you wanna wrap up all the way to the end of the limb. Now another thing, 
is you don't want to waste time removing clothing or be moving muscles trying to take off your shirt or roll your sleeves up. You want to actually bandage straight over the pants or your shirt or if you've got a first aid to have them cut it away. The reason being is you don't want to be lifting your arms above your head say to take off your shirt and having that venom move down your arm into your lymph nodes where it's going to move into your circulatory system. Now that you've got your limb bandaged, like I said, you want blood supply to be back in your fingers and you don't want it to be so tight that it's cutting anything off. It should just be holding everything nice and tense so that you're not moving your muscles. It's slowing the venom's progress, not stopping it entirely. So the next thing you want to be doing is to further stop you moving this limb is apply a splint. Now this kit actually comes with a splint. It rolls up nice and handy. And when you unroll it, it actually molds to the shape of your arm. Now, in an ideal situation, you'd have somebody else doing this for you. But like I said, let's pretend I'm out in the bush and, and there's nobody coming to help me. You want to have that split holding your arm nice and straight, nice and still. And using our regular bandage, this one doesn't have the same tension, you want to hold that splint in place. Now, now when you start talking about snake bite to the general public, the first thing people start asking is, how long do you have if you're bitten by a brown snake? Or how long do I have if I'm bitten by a taipan? Now there's a lot of things that will impact this. The first one is individual people. Different people will react differently to a bite. On top of that, obviously different bites. Let's say somebody has a lot of venom injected and somebody has a little bit. Different species. But one of the biggest things is going to be this first aid. If uh, you're bitten by a brown snake, for instance, and uh, just last week, unfortunately, a bloke was killed by a brown snake trying to take it off his dogs, and uh, he didn't make it. Now, if you start running around like a headless chook and waving your arms in the air, you're going to be a goner pretty quickly. If you sit down and you keep your heart rate nice and relaxed, you're probably going to be okay as long as you apply the correct first aid. The last thing we want to be doing, now that we've got the limb bandaged up with that compression bandage and we've got a splint holding the arm still and a bandage holding that in place, is uh, with a little text you want to mark the bite site. Now, the reason you want to be doing this is when you get to hospital, rather than having to take this bandage all the way off and risk having these, these effects hit you all of a sudden, a doctor can pull them to the sides a little bit and that's how they can take a swab and figure out what you've been bitten by. I said at the very beginning, you don't want to be taking a snake in and this is why. All the doctor has to do is take a swab of that bite site. So you don't want to wash it. They're going to take a swab of that bite site, stick it in their little test and it'll come up with which antivenine you need to treat the bite. Now, a couple of years ago, a friend of mine was bitten by a death adder, the fifth most venomous snake in the world. And uh, he applied the first aid exactly like we're doing here. And when he got to hospital, he was actually in there for five hours doing tests, trying to figure out how bad the bite was before they took the bandage off. And up until the point of taking off the bandage, he says that he felt no effects at all. He felt a bit anxious, obviously, but he didn't feel sick, he didn't feel tired, he didn't feel the droopiness in your face that's often accompanied with, with death adder bites. However, as soon as they took the bandage off, he slipped, into a, slipped in and out of consciousness for the next two days. His heart stopped a couple of times. So it just goes to show that a, a correctly applied compression bandage really can save your life. So there you go. That's how we want to wrap a snake bite. Keep it still, have that nice compression, but not cut off blood supply. And you want to be calling for help to come to you. The less you have to be up and moving, the better. You want to stop that muscle movement. Now, personally, I think this is something that people should learn in schools and, and workplaces all across Australia. We live in the snake capital of the world. We need to know how to treat a snake bite. Now, any compression bandage is going to be a good idea to keep handy on you if you're on a farm like myself, you're out in the bush or anything like that. But, like I said, I do recommend this kit here, uh, especially because of these, these smart bandages. The less thinking you have to do in a stressful situation, the better outcome you're likely to have. So I will leave a link below. Uh, if you are interested in the kit or even just the bandages separately that are available, hit that link. And uh, other than that, guys, please be careful around snakes. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Keep checking back, all that sort of thing. And other than that, guys, please have a good one and take care. Mm -hmm.